Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast presents episode 525, Slice of DLC, recorded live on January 28th, 2016. Everyone, welcome to Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I'm your host, Dust Storm. And I'm your other host, Biowolf. And I'm Haas. And I'm GT. And welcome back to another fun filled episode that we're going to be talking about the January update, Infinity's Armory, that just dropped uh, this past week. And it's been quite interesting so far. I've got to play on both maps so far uh, Riptide and uh, the Warzone map, which I'm blanking on at the moment. But uh, we have a special guest with us tonight. Uh, heralding all the way over from Ultimate Halo now is uh, Kenny. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Good to be here. Yay. We've been talking to you a little while about having you on the show. It's nice to have you finally on here. Um, you've you've kind of... I'm finally here. I made it. Yes, you did. I made it. You've kind of jumped around a I'm little set bit. for life. <laughs> well, we'll see. How- yeah, no, no. There's I've been busy, but... It's good to finally be here. Yeah, you, you've jumped around quite a bit, as it, as it seems. Um, yes. Yeah. For better or worse. <laughs> yeah. I'd say for better, actually. Well, that's good. No, yeah, I'm I'm happy where I'm at. Good, good, good. So, as you guys may have already noticed, or may have already been playing, the Infinity Armory is live. It went live on Tuesday this week. Tends to be Tuesday that they drop these things. So we have Urban, which is the new Wars and Assault map. We have Riptide, which is the new arena map. And then we have a laundry list full of wrecks, which we covered last week. And I personally played... Pizza. Yeah, pizza. Oh, that wreck. Um, there is uh, quite a bit different on Urban when it comes to attacking or defending in, in Wars and Assault that I think is pretty significantly different than the other Warzone assault variants that we we've had on there. So we'll talk about that a little bit. And then Riptide is the new arena map. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But first, Kenny, since you are our guest tonight and this is the first time you've been on Podtacular, we need to learn a little bit about you. Are you going to ask the questions? I am going to ask the questions. So why don't you go ahead and tell us how you got involved with Halo? What was the, what was the thing that got you... Uh, enticed into this wonderful franchise that we all love it's a dream come true um well uh i guess back when i was like i don't know third grade fourth grade i don't know um when the, my uncle got an xbox the original xbox um brought it home set it up and he had halo on it and i had no idea what it was obviously in third grade probably a little bit less than the recommended age for mature <laughs> uh, play a mature video game. Um, but I'd watch him and uh you know it was it was just interesting um to say the least. Um I'd I'd like to watch and and just I don't, I don't know, video games were just pretty new to me, I guess. Um and it kind of just spiraled from there into this this blur where I eventually got an Xbox 360 for Christmas and that came with Halo 3. Um and then I randomly got Halo 2 just out of the blue. And I played those and I was just so fascinated by the story and the fact that a video game could have such this deep universe. And that's that's kind of just where it's been for me. And then I got onto YouTube um, on my own old channel a while ago. Um, probably three years ago or so. Um, when I was 14. Uh, very high voice. Um, not that it's any better now. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so then I think two, no, I don't want to say two, two months ago, probably a year ago, um, last February, um, I joined Ultimate Halo um, to, to make some videos um, back when the channel had like 35,000 subscribers. And then I was there for about five months. And then I got onto Halo Follower uh, in, in June. And then now I'm back on Ultimate Halo in here in January. So it's been a pretty good ride, but I, I definitely love where I'm at. Very nice. So what particular part of Halo really interests you the most now that you are kind of really into the thick of it? Um, I think it has to be the community. Not really, I, I guess that's kind of not really within the game, but I think the community that surrounds the game is 
really one of the main reasons why I love why I love this community so much and and Halo so much is because you know you have you have cosplayers and artists and animators making their own own movies and even people trying to make their own Halo games and I can't name pretty much any other franchise that has this diverse of a community which I mean I think can only keep growing as as years go on cool so you said you started off kind of making videos for Halo on your own channel and now you're doing it back in Ultimate Halo what kind of videos do you make or, or really like making um, I think I don't, I don't know I guess I kind of just like I mean the main thing I do is I just cover Halo news and things like that on Ultimate Halo um, <laughs> I see I see Braden in the chat there uh, he's, he's one of my friends that used to work with me back on follower um, I, I think I just I like doing news videos um, as well as a lot of community oriented videos as well. I used to have uh, a show on Halo Follower called Halo Uplink where I would feature um, tweets from the community, uh, clips from the community, funny funny clips and things that happen in Halo, um, and, and even creations and, and art and things like that from the community. So I really think um, community oriented shows or, or videos would have to be my favorite thing. Very nice. Well, we're happy to have you on board. Um, another thing I want to kind of bring up real quick too is that ultimate halo kind of took a back seat for a, a few months actually and for sure yeah you're back with uh one of your other colleagues as well so you guys are kind of pretty much tag teaming it with um i think it's you fletch i think that's the name and then wang it's time me, yeah it's me jack and tyler and wang time all back in ultimate halo very nice is there any kind of cool stuff that is kind of coming down the pipeline i've seen wang time do his kind of really uh off the wall things, which is kind of his style. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he, <laughs> he he's a he's a fun one. Um, yeah, we we're getting back into the swing of things. Um, we we have a couple of things planned that we are we have not really talked about much yet. Spartan Sneaky Ninja Warrior. Things. That's that's a thing that's coming. Um, we have some other projects coming up too, but. Yeah, Spartan Ninja Warrior, um, Fletch is going to get back into doing uh, his lore series about the locations in, in the Halo universe called uh, Destination Halo. Oh, cool. Um, and then Tyler, I think, is going to be doing some more uh, rec showcases. Um, and I think he's also going to be doing lore videos as well. Um, and then we're also working with a friend um, named Token, who was also on Halo Follower for a while. I don't know if you've heard of him or not. Um, but he's also really great at doing like kind of documentary style lore videos. And so we're going to be working with him in the future as well to um, do some more of those, which are the, these really super high quality videos. It's just crazy how much effort and time he puts into these. Um, and he just did one. Uh, we just put one up on the channel about uh, the insurrectionists in Halo. And it's just this awesome style that he has. And so we're going to be hopefully doing more of those in the future. Very cool. That's uh, quite a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Gosh. Full plate? Yeah, but there was another word that, I don't know. My yeah, <clears throat> words are difficult. <laughs> Apparently, do the words, do the English. Yeah. So we got Infinity's Armory for this month's update, and it came with quite a few things. We talked about a lot of stuff last week, but who here has actually played the new maps? I've played both Riptide and um, what's the words on Urban? I played both of those. Uh, who who else has played those maps so far? I have played both. I've I haven't had a chance to play. I anything. haven't played any. I've played Halo Five, and I haven't seen any of them pop up yet. Okay, I guess uh, that leaves me in host. Anyways, we have with herb like so. Whenever the you have the Warzone Assault maps, the variants based off them. Not really much of the map has changed, other than kind of closing off areas. But this time, they actually did quite a bit of change. So you start off with one of the garages, and then that whole middle structure is completely changed into an armory. And I've only played it once, so I don't know the dynamics of the map too well. We might have to revisit this one back next week. But th does it... Uh, I don't know. When you when you played it, Haas, did it feel a little off? It felt way too open. Is like... Yeah. Uh, it's I, a vehicle-heavy map. It is. And, it, you know, it, it kind of... I think it struggles with a lot of the same things Battle of Noctis does. Um, it, it just feels so open that you just don't really have a chance. I, I, I don't know. Especially on the Assault. Um, I played Defenders and Attackers, and I did not feel good being an Attacker at all. Like, 
and it was one of the first times in Warzone Assault that I felt I had no shot. And we, I mean, our team was getting plenty of kills, and we were, most of us were level sevens or eights by the end of, by the end of it, and we barely had gotten the first, the first base, and then didn't even advance past the second. So, I don't know, it, it just felt weird. I'm not a big fan of Battle of Noctis or this one. I guess I would have to be honest. So Battle of Noctis, I find that's actually a lot of fun because it is a little bit different than what we got with the past ones. But this one, I've only played it once. And I have heard there are some exploits that the defending team can use against the attacking team. So I'm assuming those will be patched in at some point. But just I think you kind of really hit the nail on the head when you said it was too open because... Most of the stuff, once you get out there, you're, I mean, once you get past the garage, really, you're completely in the open trying to attack the armory, and there's just not much room for you to, to get up there and, and take yeah. it easily. Yeah, you, it really needs to be coordinated pushes on this map. If you're going to be trying to all come from one side or you know make sure you're able to help each other out if you're coming from multiple sides, it, it kind of takes away a little bit of the individual skill element of it. Because if you get a team that's even halfway paying attention, you're, you're toast. Yeah. I only played it once, too, and that, it wasn't on the attacking team, and that we actually did win. That last push up the hill to the base is also very difficult as well. This, this map overall seems like it's, it's very hard for the attacking team to make headway. I mean, the garage... The garage is pretty comparable, I think, to the rest of the garages. So, um, like the uh, what's the garage one on um, whatever the, the escape from the arc one is for assault, like that garage, it, it pretty much plays similarly in this one, I think. But <clears throat> you're going uphill, and oh, it's pretty open when you're attacking the armory and the base. And, and I think you know my opinion. My opinions may very well change if I get more time with it. And, you know, the amount of teammates you have can obviously change any experience, especially within Halo 5. So, I mean, those things very well could change. I, I've only had so much time with it, but I I just see a very open map, and I, I'm kind of okay with a difficult Warzone experience if you're, uh-huh. you're it, just trying to figure it out, because I think that's kind of what's cool about Halo maps is they can place so differently that you kind of have to learn those maps and how to play those maps. You can't just always be an aggressive pusher on every map. So maybe, maybe that will change. I, just right now, I'm not necessarily digging the map. Yeah, me neither. So <clears throat> well, I guess we'll try to visit that one next week when everyone else has a chance to get their hands on it. Uh, Arena... We had Riptide added, which is supposed to be the remix of Fathom. Um, who else has played this one? I played for a good hour, and I haven't had a chance to get on any of the new maps or anything. Really? Yeah. Playing matchmaking for an hour? Yep. I haven't. I haven't seen them yet. I've only played Dang. Riptide in customs, but I yeah, me too. That's, I, I that's mean, a good point to make. I, that's okay. Not for me, but I don't know. Anyone I, else? I, I like nah. it. I I haven't played it either. <laughs> All right, I guess it's a Haas and Me show, it seems like tonight. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> I actually haven't even been on Halo for the past two days. Oh, really? Yeah, I've been working on other things like, you know, taxes and, you know, kind of uh, important stuff. Those are fun. Yeah. Ooh, GT, taxes aren't doing until the 18th this year. The Halo podcast, not the unofficial life podcast. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes life just gets in the way. It's always in the way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that idea if you don't do it. <laughs> the unofficial <laughs> life podcast, copyrighted. I will do it. Yeah, copyrighted. I think there's a yeah, lot of those out there already. <laughs> just search yeah. iTunes. We need more. Today it rained. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> exactly. So, so for Riptide, I kind of got. I don't know. I got a, a feel of a, of a mix of maps, really. It didn't feel... It felt very disconnected from Fathom in a good, like, half of the map to me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I... The half that is Fathom, I love it. 
like like where where it's sticking out of the water and i i, I don't know i uh-huh i really liked the the lighting on this map i liked it being kind of brighter and just the different environments you go into like one one side is dark and damp feeling and then the other side you're like this is a whole different map i'm in the middle of a a desert and one's in a factory it, i really liked it and it played pretty well um one little knock i have to point out why why is the sniper right next to the hydro launcher like literally three steps away for whatever team gets a hold of that position first no bueno for the other is that top mid no no it's like back in a corner just there's the sniper is on the ground and then you just kind of like kitty corner down to your left and there's the um there there's the hydro launcher the hydro or yeah hydro not plasma gas hydro i don't know i just like feel like that would be a little op for whoever gets that position but i mean that that's a really easy fix cuz i thought the hydro spawned by down by that lift right no it spawns right by the beam it kind of is like in this little nook okay i obviously haven't played enough then to to, <laughs> to know i guess um yeah so there's i mean there's quite a bit in here and some of there's some stuff in here that remind me of overgrowth a little bit, even though it's not nearly the same kind of environment, but it did seem this, this remix seemed significantly different from the original map than a lot of the other remixes that, that we've seen, or at least that's what it feels like to me. I, I felt like they're all different maps and they play completely different. I know a lot of people disagree. I only share my, my thoughts on my experience, but, um, I, I, I still don't think I want completely new maps though. Like many people have expressed I, I I'm cool with these remixes, but these remixes can't be the only one. Like yeah. one of my favorite things about expansions in Halos in the past is you know, you see re envisionings of old maps from past Halo games or you know, you just every map was so different. And these are they're alike but they play differently. If that can make remotely any sense yeah i think it does i would personally like to see some proper big team maps made or something that is bigger than just 4v4 forge is cool and i'm glad we're starting to see a lot of the forgers get more hands-on time with these forge maps because we're actually starting to see maps that look like maps um not gray or you know bland walls which i'm really happy about like that pit remake that that's my standard for forge maps in halo 5 now like those kind of details that's what i want to see and i feel like the big team set we have right now yes the forgers didn't have a ton of time to really kind of polish those experiences and they only had what three four days maybe a week so well yeah they made the foundations of it and then they had 343 go in and try to finish them up and modify them and now the forgers are going back into making their 2.0 versions of them the way they really feel they should be. <laughs> yeah, uh, mm-hmm. that's great. Because well, you uh, know, I said before on one of the previous podcasts that they had enough time to do the basic layout on those BTB maps. They really didn't get the time to put the polish on them that they do in the regular maps. And you can see that in the new maps that they're creating, the polish on the new maps is just exquisite. I mean, yeah, there's. The pit is the perfect example. It looks better than the original. Yeah, it looks like a uh, actual. And it map. plays the same. They got a few little things to mix up. Well, fix, um, but yeah, but yeah, you can so, only do so much in Forge, though. Yeah, no, no. I, I mean, like, it not not saying the map's broken. Like, uh, when you're coming out a flag, you can't clamber that wall. You kind of have to like jump, crouch, and thrust. Like that, that could be fixed a little bit, but. That's the only thing that I can honestly complain about on that that pit map. Well, considering you couldn't do that in the original. Yeah, but in competitive settings, they put two crates there so that you could jump up on. That's what that's the version of pit I'm used to is being able to jump right there. So, uh, gotcha. <clears throat> I think it's one of those things too that <clears throat> we're seeing a lot of people work on remix or not remixes remakes of original maps. And that's really filling in a lot of the nostalgia void and is kind of replacing 
in the manner of speaking, a lot of those custom maps because <clears throat> these arena maps, they're only meant for 4v4. There's no bigger team proper maps made. And I think that's something that's severely missing. I have to say one thing. If you're going to remake a map, please keep in mind you don't have to use armor abilities on everything, such as, or Spartan ability. <laughs> like, I was playing an Ivory Tower one, and you had to clamber going up around rockets. Uh, and it just felt scaled so huge. Like, I, I just want to jump there. I don't, I don't want to clamber. So, you know, find a balance. Like, it's cool being able to use jumps and to grab onto ledges. Don't make it a necessity to grab ledges or... Things like so that. to get up from rockets, you had to clamber back up. So you you know how there's like the terrace that goes up to underneath sniper, like yeah. it has the terraces. You had to clamber on each level of the terraces, and that that was the one uh, three four three featured in their weekly update. Hmm. It just kind of bothered me a little bit. But. Yeah. Well, yeah, because <clears throat> there are some of these remakes that are being made. They're making game types that's like. This is the Halo 3 game type without any Spartan abilities, clamber, any of that stuff. So it's basically trying to bring that classic Halo back for classic maps, which I think is fine. You have a game type that is specifically for classic Halo, and you put those with the classic maps, and then it plays very similarly to how it did before. Yeah, I, I'm cool with throwback. I just, not every Spartan ability has to be used throughout your map. But well, it's your map, not yeah. mine, so... The the one thing I would maybe say adjust your map for is sprint. Mm -hmm. But you don't even have to do that for every map either. A lot I, I've really found a lot of the Halo 3 remakes feel really good with the Halo 5. Like it, the ones that are kind of going one to one on those, they feel really good. Like they just feel scaled mm -hmm. correctly. The Halo 2 ones, not so much. And I think people are kind of going off the POVs and things like that. Um, I, I've noticed a lot of the Twitch streams that people are doing. They're they're having another Xbox or they're doing a map walkthrough while they're forging so they can really make sure it's correct, but it's not quite correct for Halo 5. I've seen a few people do it where they take a crate and then they measure it out via crates distance wise and then actually make the map now you can only really do that from halo 3 onwards but halo 2 i do remember whenever they were talking about the terminal one they had someone in there basically trying to look at every single um piece and try to match it up as well, much Decane's, as possible to the original decane's working on a blood goal tree make and he's using warthogs that should yeah, be that works too. Yeah, I saw that. I, I'm I'm really interested to see how that one works because Blood Gulch is a very open map, and yeah. weapons like this DMR they got some range. Mm -hmm. You have to work on your your placement of weapons too. Yeah, and types sure. of weapons. Blood Gulch is one of those staples though that I think will will work pretty much in any Halo game. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's, there's just some maps that are, that are just like, hey, this is. This is a Halo classic. This is going to be something that is going to live on forever in the Halo community. <laughs> or that will work. Yeah, I ran around on a I think Valhalla. Blood Gulch remake in Halo 5. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. We're, we're talking Blood Gulch. Talk Blood Gulch. Um, I was just going to say, I think with a Blood Gulch remake in, in Halo 5, it, it's going to play significantly faster, and it'll probably feel way different than anything we're used to, especially just because of the fact that the Magnum in this game is almost comparable to the battle rifle so there's there's going to be engagements from much longer ranges than we're used to and i think that's either going to make the map feel a lot smaller or it's just going to make the game go way faster yep well the, the spartan abilities are going to make it the map feel smaller just for the simple fact of your your sprint oh, yeah, sure. you, you can move around the map quickly unlike you know in the original halo it took some time to get across blood gulch unless you had a vehicle <laughs> definitely yeah. But now with Sprint... I guess CTF... Go ahead, Dust. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I think with the the whole armor abilities, or the Spartan abilities, you I remember playing Blood Gulch and Coagulation back in college and doing unlimited time capture the flag. And sometimes those games would take three to four hours. 
Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm thinking though with Spartan abilities, those games would be significantly reduced in, in time, but I still think it would be something that'd be hella fun to play. Oh yeah. We were running around on a Valhalla remake the other night. That was really solid. I was very impressed. No water, but they use glass. Yeah. Well, hopefully water is something that they'll add later to Forge. This is something where, I know we mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, where uh, when we had the community cartographers on, but something like a, a PC forging system to mm-hmm. have someone make these maps I feel like that would be, be kind of nice. Like, maybe not in Halo 5, but I could see it coming in Halo 6. I would hope. You know, with the power of the cloud. Like PC all. forging system? What do you mean? Like, you what, can create the maps you like on your that? PC. So you can forge on the PC, okay. and then they can be implemented on the Xbox One, on the file browser or whatever, wherever somebody wants to find it. That sounds really cool. The way they described it on the, on the Forgecast is that in the game, you would have a basic map editor. And then for the more advanced people like the the forging community, uh, they would have a, a more advanced version that they could run on the PC where they could have keyboard and mouse. And Basically, the idea that we came up with was it would be something where pulling it into the PC, you would have a lot more options to making custom terrain and being able to, instead of having to take like blocks and stuff, you'd be able to custom create a structure Mm-hmm. and then pull that in. So <clears throat> all the forge pieces, like maybe barriers and barrels and trees and stuff, those would still be set to forge objects, but you'd be able to custom make your own structures and terrain. And then on top of that, you'd be able to put in additional forge pieces in on the PC, and that would make creating maps a whole lot quicker, and then being able to push those back to the Xbox, or if Halo 6 comes to the PC, which the the frameworks that any Xbox One game is being made on right now is capable of being played on Windows 10. So there's no reason that MCC or Halo 5 couldn't be ported over to PC. But that was something that we were talking about during the the Forgecast that we had with the community cartographers a couple weeks ago. So anyways, that would be kind of fun. But back to uh, Riptide. Um, it is available in Team Arena, Slayer, SWAT, and FFA. As far as the whole weapon spawn things, I have to, I have to go back and, and check. But is there a fuel rod on that map as well, Haas? A what? A what? About? Fuel rod? It's a beam uh, rifle, a hydra, and I think a fuel rod. Yes. That thing's pretty beefy on that map. It is. <laughs> it definitely is. And the map also has... The Halo 2 doesn't. VR. Um, does it have the Halo 2? Okay. That's what I was I thinking about. Like, I wasn't sure. Does. Okay. Yeah. So it does. One, and it respawns every 20 seconds. Okay. I actually saw someone post a video up on YouTube of doing a comparison with the Halo 5 BR to the Halo 2 BR. Yes. The differences are minuscule. They are small. They feel different. The Halo 5 BR, though, pulls up where the Halo 2 BR does not. Oh, is that the difference? Okay. That is the difference. Because the kill time I saw was maybe a frame. Yeah, it's different. not much. I, I I find the Halo 2 VR, though, feels way better. Like, I, I picked up both and was kind of like just running around spamming people with them. And I don't. I, I honestly would never use the Halo 5 VR again if the Halo 2 bar, VR is available. That that's how much better it feels to me. I'm the other way around. I I still like the Halo I, Five I one. I agree. I didn't like the Halo Two BR to be perfectly honest. I I think that may be because you came in more to Halo Three time frame, uh, and I think the Halo Five. I, I played Halo. Closer to that. Well, I know you played a bunch. I was playing but Halo like, Two Vista before I was playing Halo Three. I I, I don't know. I. I love the Halo 2 VR. The Halo 3 VR disgusts me. Yeah, I won't argue that. Of the two, I'd rather have the (laughs) Halo 2 VR than the Halo 3. Like, Zachariah posted on Twitter, like, that thing has created trust issues. (laughs) 
Like, <laughs> All right, fair I enough. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So that's pretty much it for the update. I guess we'll try to revisit these maps when Bio and GT have gotten their hands on a little bit more as well. There is a couple other things to talk about. First off, uh, Halo announced today that the Fall of Reach graphic novel is going to be coming out in March, but you can pre-order pre-order it right now. So you're able to head on over to um uh they have a link in here if you go to aka.ms slash fall of reach um pre-order it takes you to a place where you can go ahead and pre-order the graphic novel so if that's something that you're looking to get into you can go ahead and pre-order it right now the pre-order price is $19.99 it was $24.99 it's from a place called tfa or tfa comics it's something I have not heard of before, but that is where it is being currently available, currently being sold. So make sure you check that out if you're interested. Also, Halo is going to the X Games this weekend. So if you guys are watching, then they've already started. Uh, they already started uh, the bracket play today. I haven't had a chance to watch any of it yet, but they, they have started playing for the eight teams that are there that's happening in aspen colorado this weekend so make sure you check out the stream they are streaming on uh mlg tv halo's twitch channel probably on the halo channel as well on the xbox or windows 10 and then there's going to be highlights on uh espn on tv and then watch espn is also hosting the stream as well for halo so make sure you check that out lots of cool stuff going on uh, and the fun thing is that all the teams are going to be getting, getting medals as well for this. But um, day one was group play today. Uh, day two tomorrow on Friday is going to be another round of group play. Day three is going to be the final brackets, uh, finals brackets, and then day four is going to be the all star matchup. And for those of us that didn't, or for those of you that didn't catch us last week, uh, Xbox.com also announced the teams and. Just to refresh your memory, it is Team Allegiance, uh, Renegades, CLG, uh, Dream Team, Evil Geniuses, Epsilon, Team Liquid, and Penta. Uh, Penta Go being team a team from... <laughs> uh, Penta being the German team and Epsilon being the UK team. Everyone else is from the US. And or... those US teams were taking it to them today. <laughs> like, pretty bad. Yeah, so if you... T- Saw a few tweets talking about either Allegiance or Renegades today. I think it was Allegiance. Allegiance is U.S. So. Right. And they, yeah, they were kind of like a cat playing with a wounded bird. That's kind of oh, what gosh. they in Halo terms. It, Alrighty. It, it was nasty. <laughs> what do you think is going to be the possibility we might see one of the internationals in the top four? No chance. Very no low. Chance. Very low, if anything. Yeah. Like, I think Optic would beat them, and Optic, I don't even think, are going to make it. Well, Optic's not on here. Or unless you're talking about Optic. I'm talking about, like, they didn't even make it. Period, like, world championships and all. Oh, okay. Optic hasn't even qualified yet, but I I think in these X games and in the world championships, uh, apologies to the European teams or the foreign teams. I mean, if the Asia qualifier was going to be any kind of indication of how it was going to go against North American teams, I I don't I can't see any international teams making it very far up the, up the bracket. I, I well, I'm guessing the only real the, I mean, I would say the only well, I mean, I I don't want to sound demeaning to the other countries, but <clears throat> to me, the best countries that would have a chance of really taking this are any UK team that make the Europe. European qualifiers or the European finals. Uh, I hesitate to say it, but maybe an Aussie team. But other than that, uh, it, I don't it think would be... anybody outside of the UK or Europe, kind of the ones we saw. Uh, I mean, there could be a surprise. There, there could we, we be. We could get I surprised. Just, I have seen nothing that would make me think that it could happen. I mean, sports and esports are weird, but it's kind of like. <laughs> Europe coming here and trying to beat us in the NFL. Like, probably wouldn't happen. And, or us trying to take soccer to them. We don't do too well. <laughs> uh, that's just my 
observation of it. I think what part of it comes down to is the fact that all these other places around the world haven't had so much exposure in esports with first person shooters outside of CSGO recently, yeah. especially on a console FPS like Halo. And I think that the fact that there's never been such a high profile tournament like this around around the world for all these other places that have never again had any exposure. I think that's what, part of the reason why there's not really much of a sliver of hope for these other places around the yeah, world. They don't really have their MLG type setup. It, it, yeah. It's newer to them. They've had esports, but like you just said, on the console and first person shooter, not so much. Well, I think to expand yeah. on that too, it's another thing that because they haven't had those opportunities for the tournaments, I think there hasn't been as much of an effort for people to be playing constantly and developing the skills as much as the American teams have. So kind of going off of what you were for saying, sure. Kenny, I, I think that's another... I mean, we, we could see so a, a team... Because whenever Halo 4 came out and MLG had their little exhibition thing, or their, their like initial... <laughs> yeah, I know people laugh at it. Um, but their initial and one and only Halo 4 event, there were teams that, that came in and they kind of surprised people. Um, people that really hadn't seen any limelight in any competitive capacity before. And Halo 5 is still pretty new out there where people are still kind of getting used to the mechanics. Granted, some of the higher profile American teams have nailed a lot of them down, but there's still a lot of other kind of variables in there that you still have to account for and you still have to play months and months and months to really nail down a, a groove or get all the abilities under your belt. So there's there's a possibility we might see just a team come out of nowhere and be like, oh, this is okay. I do hope that we see the Halo World, well, HCS still be expanded towards the world and not just the US after the Halo World Championship. I don't know like how what the cost is of that, but in... Uh, Even if it's just yearly, like have regional stuff yeah. go on throughout the year, but do it... So like... Take the MLG Pro Circuit back in the Halo Two and Three days. You had, you have, you can do like do regional stuff for countries and have maybe a big thing maybe every three or four months or whatever. Like like have those qualifiers for throughout the year. So have one quarter be like you do lands per quarter, and then you have one big one at the end of a of a season or something. Mm hmm. Could see something like that. Or do two seasons. Do two a year instead of. Three or four, or sorry, do like one, do like one overall season with lands and and stuff to qualify and get points, and then have two big final stuff throughout the year instead of having like three big final things and then do one overall world final. But I'm just shooting from the hip on ideas. Yeah, uh, they got to continue to push. One, they got to continue to push high dollar tournaments so the players want. To continue to play, but on you know, they, there's so much to do for Halo. Like you, you really, the money has to be there to pull larger audiences in that are going to play and support it. And part of my fear is I don't know if Halo can do that. They can't keep crowdfunding from rec packs forever. Also, yep. to to get a big prize pool, yep. I don't know how they're going to come up with this much money again unless well, they get some sort of giant investment or sponsorship or whatever. And that's something that I brought up before too, because it's one of those things where it's only gonna it only has that initial flair for so long. And they didn't even announce how much money they made after the HCS packs because they, they stated the two million before they started selling the HCS packs. So we don't even know where that HCS money went, to be honest. Well I think they're kinda wait until this last tournament, the last uh, qualifier that they're gonna have. I would expect an announcement right after that or during that, like, oh, by the way, guys, you're now playing for four million dollars because I, I would bet it's probably close to that. If though, do you really think they made that much I money? <laughs> I'm thinking 2.5, maybe. Really? But I really can't see it being much higher from from. I see at least at least declining. Three. Yeah, I'd say I'd say around three, maybe maybe getting close closer to four. But, but I definitely there very well could be a big sponsorship that's coming through that 
Big Daddy Microsoft negotiated that, you know, <laughs> pushed it that or hell, just Microsoft giving yeah, it or and, yeah, and well, here you go. Hey, let's promote this thing further, but Microsoft is going to want to see its return investment. That's yeah. for sure. And because yeah, but then that, I don't know. I just I just can't see it going much further. Well, yeah, I they, don't either. They, I, I don't I know how you. much Microsoft could do because they're they got Gears of War esports starting up now too, and so that's going to be two yeah. esports under the Microsoft belt. They're going to stretch. Them. Yeah, it, you can't stretch it too thin, but at the same time, you gotta you gotta pull these people in if you're if you're wanting to be relevant in the esports community. There, I don't think esports is really been tapped to where it's actually could go. Like I I think there is a ton of room to grow and I think Blizzard's purchase of MLG is kind of a sign of that and what their goal is with that. Uh, that that's how I see it. In time I think esports will be a thing, but I just with Halo as in cur- in its current state, it's hard to see Halo becoming a mainstream esport title. Granted I mean, I would love to see it be that way, but look at the crowds for League. Look at the crowds for CSGO. Those are, and like, they pull in an international audience for a reason. Halo doesn't do that. Yeah, it's definitely a uh, challenge. Yeah. And for Halo, there's still a lot of other things that need to be there in order for it to really kind of survive as an esports title. I just don't think, I mean, Watching the online qualifiers, the fact that people are saying what the result is before they're even starting to stream, like they should have something in place for being able to do official streaming events where they have a live spectator view and they don't have to be waiting to spectate a game. There should be yeah. some technology that they have at their disposal to make this like Halo be an actual esports and I mean, if you look at Call of Duty Black Ops, which is a game that has been out for, what, six years now? They had a full, like, spectator thing where you could blow out a window, you can go through, select someone's view, and then snap to it instead of having to rotate through everybody. And you can make, like, a, a dash, like, spectator mode and have something special as a, a one-off that you can use for broadcasters so they can maybe have, like, a, a quad screen up on a team, be able to snap to that and be able to have tools at their disposal, and especially for, like, Walshy, because I like Walshy commentating for a very specific reason. I think a lot of people do, too, is that he walks through why teams are doing certain things instead of just calling out action. Because, honestly, commentators that just do are doing play-by-play, it's like, I am watching the screen. I understand what's going on, but Walshy's comment. Terry. I don't know about you, but I liked the Asia commentators for the Asia Asia streams. Those guys are pretty good. I didn't watch the Asian I don't ones. Know if you watch those? No. <laughs> are they good? <laughs> no, or dude, it's it's bad. one of those so bad it's good thing. Oh, oh man. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> but I mean, to the back to like Washington though, he actually goes through and explains why teams are are doing what they're doing and explaining why certain plays are are good, and they're. I would guess that there are tools that 343 could implement for Halo that would kind of help benefit that. I mean, the outlines help a tad, but that's really the only benefit that I get from Spectator mode right now when it comes to casting. And that's really not that much. Mm -hmm. Anyways, end rant. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Rant over. Yeah. So there's the X Games going on this weekend. So make sure you check out that action over on Halo's Twitch MLG TV, watch ESPN, and then you'll be able to catch some of the highlights on broadcast television. On I guess, are this I guess the X Games are going to be primarily on ESPN or ESPN two. Yeah, two. So there'll be highlights supposedly of this Invitational on national television. So at least Halo's getting some national broadcast attention, which is kind of cool. Something else that also got dropped today was Warzone Vehicle Packs, which you can go and purchase on the Rec Store. Uh, unfortunately, this is something that you can only buy with money. You can't use Rec Points, which quite a few of us have an issue with. I do wish they would change that. I think more than a couple of us have issues with it. <laughs> so that is, I believe... Five ninety nine, if I was not mistaken. 
Does that sound right? I think so. I have to go back and check real quick. Yeah, five ninety nine. Yeah. And it is it's packs that contain permanent wreck vehicles of rare um or above. And then like with that you get a lot of vehicle consumables with that too. And this is another case where it, it's just going to in my opinion, it's supporting people that decide to shell out a bunch of money. It is just kind of going more towards that pay to win style. I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's close to pay to win at all, but I do think that it's an unnecessary level of microtransactions. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I don't, I, I feel like this is going to be kicking a dead horse a little bit, but I feel like it would be perfectly reasonable and within their business model to just, if they want to do these specialized packs to, to do what they did with the, um, the, the HCS uh, rec pack thing where you can have a ridiculous, really high number of, of rec points that you need to have and then you can buy. Yeah. It. It's not going to be like, you know, five or 10,000 just with the silver and gold packs. It'll be, I don't know, maybe 50 or 100,000 or maybe even higher if you really want it to be that high and want to encourage people. But it should still be possible, I think, if they really want to encourage as many people to try and get these as possible. To make it to where you can just get the packs from playing the game for just a way longer time than you normally would. I agree. I think it should be. I think any pack that's made available with money should be at some point able to get rec- with rec points. I mean, just looking at the gold bundles too. That should be. Sure. You should be able to get any pack. Any pack that you can get with money, you should be able to get with some amount of rec points. In my opinion. I think that would translate really well to encouraging people to continue to play and, and save up rec points with those gold bundles where you can buy like, I don't know, 5, 10, 20 of them. I think if they increased um, exponentially the number of rec points that you have to have to get those bundles with just rec points alone and not currency, I think that would be a great way to actually encourage players to get more rec points and to keep playing the game. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Although this kind of brings into question, what's Microsoft's mantra here? Are they really just looking for money, or are they looking for player retention? I think it's more money. Or- money, and, money, money. And that's money. my problem, because because I understand where the rec system really does kind of entice people to keep playing. Because I mean, to bio chagrin, one of the things is that if there's a rec that you want, the game's going to make you keep playing until you get that rec. So in a sense. That's a good player retention model, but the fact that you have these Warzone packs that are only able to be acquired through purchasing, one, it does kind of indicate that Microsoft really is, has more interest in money than player retention. And two, it does really get to start being that microtransaction focus to where it's not quite pay to win, but it starts to enter that gray area of that. Well, it's not exactly pay to win, but it's pay to not lose. Not so exactly. Badly. No. Right. You no, know, but the it's... fact that you, like whenever you're buying one of these, uh, vehicle packs that that's just, and you can only get that through money. So people that have to normally go through and get vehicles with a gold pack instead of buying this thing, I mean, they're taking a whole lot longer. And this is just, it's like, hey, you have money to shell us out? Here's a shortcut to get all the nice stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm just, I don't I'm not like real that happy at all. with that. No, and I know it's something, it's like something very minute compared to the rest of the Halo game, but it's still something that it's a mindset that I am starting to take an issue with that I really am uncomfortable about. Well, I think we've already we've already seen it done though in a triple A major FPS title, and that would be Battlefield Four, where I don't know if you ever played it, but in their progression system, it is you do unlock things based on ranks with things kind of like rec packs, um, and you do get like random weapons and and customization things and cosmetic items as well. But you literally it it takes rec packs to a next level if you want to compare them side by side. Because you literally have the option to just, they're called shortcuts, and you just buy all the vehicles. You literally just, there's an option to just literally buy every single vehicle, every single gun, every, every single cosmetic thing, every, every camo for your, for your character. You can literally buy all of these things separately. 
or all together with one giant purchase if you literally want to. So I think that's kind of taking it to the extreme. And it's it's sold well with with them and it's made DICE a lot of money, even with their 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 premium memberships as well that they have going for Battlefield. It's kind of like an unfortunate truth. Yeah. I, I, I don't I don't think there's really a way to stop it. You're seeing it come into every game. I mean games like Tomb Raider have microtransactions now and I don't know. It, really? it just Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Why? Um for what? For like unlocks and like kind of like big head mode type stuff too and it, it doesn't okay. make sense to me, but you know, it, it just takes a couple of fans to they got to have the complete package essentially. And so what are they going to do? They're going to spend I guess that's where we're going with with the with this new generation of of video games and and electronic entertainment where it's just always it's continue to spend money after your initial purchase it's never just going to be pre-orders and dlc anymore that was that was towards the end of 360 and this is the new evolution where you try to continue to get your to get your audience and customers to continue to spend money after the purchasing the product I think that's also maybe playing into just the length of life people are putting into games now. Because now, not only do you have a bunch of titles coming out, but to continue to get the experience, you almost feel like you have to spend more money continuously if you're going to continue to enjoy this game. So why would I do that? Okay, I can either spend $60 here to continue this one experience, or I can spend sixty dollars here to get a whole new experience. And people like new things; they like the new shiny thing. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm pulling a little bit, but I, I'm kind of sick of it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Honestly, for me, it's come down to I am not spending a single dollar on rec packs unless it's <laughs> like directly I'm like in that boat. like the HCS one. I don't mind that one because it was supposed to be going directly to support HCS and really the only way to to guarantee those wrecks was through that pack. So I don't mind stuff like that. That's kind of like a promotional, hey, this is to directly support this thing. But otherwise, I'm not spending another cent on wreck packs. I I just, I can't believe in this system anymore. Yeah. I'll I'll grind out to complete my wrecks. I mean, I'll continue to play Halo 5, but I'm not going to spend another another dollar on it my fear is they're gonna start unintentionally or maybe intentionally because you know evil corporate people um they're gonna start hurting the player that doesn't want to spend the money like i i like that i can earn rec points at a fairly consistent pace and i can unlock those but at the same time i feel like person who spends fifteen hundred dollars on rex they're getting everything and getting a form of advantage. I, I don't feel like Rex are as big of an advantage as they are in, say, other games where you can just say, oh, you know what? I want the M16 and that's a better gun than the M416. So, you know, what I'm speaking of battlefield terms. But I I fear that Halo is going to take, you know, th- simple things like the battle rifle. Oh, sorry. You, you're going to have to start buying these things or you're. You're get- We're gonna turn into Halo Online. Yeah, it, it, exactly. And Halo Online's cool. It, it, you know that that's cool. But don't don't let that ruin your brand or your 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 franchise. What most of these players have come come to know and love. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. Like and they did it okay other- with Warzone. They yeah, did okay. But how long until there's going to be a Warzone arena? And then. Next thing, next thing you know, it's only Warzone and Warzone Arena. One of the other issues I have too is that we have a lot of things that the community wants, and we're getting so much attention from three four three on these wrecks, and it's just I, not many people care. And honestly, there's a good group of people that really don't care about certain wrecks like there's people that really don't care about a lot of the armor sets or the skins and to them it's just <clears throat> having to go through all that issue with the wreck system it gets frustrating and then you can there's other stuff this drum so many times but i don't think emblems and anything that 
you know, has been personalized. Or, you know, like we've said, that, you know, our emblems or our Spartan armor has become unique to us. There's people that make armor and emblems based off the characters in the game, and they can't get that in Halo 5 by just, you know, playing it or, you know, achieving an achievement. It's luck to make my Spartan look the way they want. It's totally up to RNG. Yep. Another thing, too, about this vehicle rec pack that I kind of thought about a little bit earlier today is that I wouldn't mind this as much. Like, I wouldn't mind having a pack that is money only if it was purely aesthetics that you're getting. But the fact that you are getting certi- certifications that do affect the kinds of cars that you can get for Warzone, which is supposed to be pretty much the social experience for Halo, you go into a game, and, I mean, last night for Warzone Wednesdays for us, we went up against some really coordinated teams, and we just got wrecked. I mean, one game we had, we lost 1,000 to 49 because we got wrecked by Oni Hogs because the other team was able to, to call out Oni Hogs quick quick and we weren't able to. And I mean it's the the whole wreck system isn't a direct correlation to that, but there is that propensity to, to have people that have those better wrecks more quickly available that does affect the outcome of a game. For the person that can make it rain, they're going to get more unlocks and they're going to get more of each item. And it's not pay to win, but it is. It's like a. It's like a more lucky pay to win. It, it's pay to have better stuff, which I mean, in a, in a in a way, it's it is pay to win because that's kind of that whole mentality. I mean, I know a lot of people don't really like to to think it is pay to win, but it is becoming more and more evident that yes, this is very similar to a pay to win style system i mean oh the only reason i'm playing warzone is one the schedule an hour i have to focus on it two i'm warming up or three i get more rec points doing it <laughs> like yep outside of that i want to play arena but i don't get lots of rec to get arena and if i don't get lots of rec i have slower build time slower process of getting what i want out of those weapons. So, so that's something that Bravo has actually come out, I think, on Reddit or Twitter and said that they are looking at balancing the amount of wreck that you get in Arena to how much wreck that you get in Warzone. That is a balance that they are trying to address. And another thing about Arena, too, is that for the amount of time you're in Warzone, sometimes you're maybe spent, you're in the middle of a game for maybe what for you maybe you have two or three games of arena that fits into war game one game of warzone and you have dead time in there and the rec system isn't going to count dead time as you earning rec points so that time in game is actually less than the time in game that you have in, in warzone which would be another reason why the arena is a little bit less i totally get that part of it it just i still think you get more rec per minute in warzone if we went off that measuring tool um there is a couple other things that I wanted to bring up first before we start to wrap it up. Uh, we had a poll that we posted a couple weeks ago that I forgot to talk about last week. So we asked, what game type do you want to see most in Halo 5? And I put down the options race, griffball, infection, and other. And we got 50% of the vote going towards infection. People hmm. really want their zombies. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> People really want their zombie uh, or infection game modes and all the fun customs. I, I don't know. For me, infection just got old because there are so many infection variants. I mean, some of them are cool, but there's just so much out there. It's just like it's beating it just rehashes of, of things over and over and over again. It's just like, come up with some better ideas, guy. Well, the nice thing about infection is, is there were a lot of mini games that were built off infection. They weren't infection yes. games, but they were just mini games that worked really well and were a lot of fun to play. Same with King of the Hill. There are so many mini games built off those that, yeah, you're playing a King of the Hill game, but you're not playing it. You're playing something else. And King of the Hill and Infection are probably the two top priorities for most people in Halo. 
you know, an assault game type or a ricochet game type for the people that want to play Griff Ball. But it's you, now we're getting right back to where we were last week. It should have shipped with them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very true. I think building on what you what you said is that you have to the way I personally like to look at infection is simply by calling calling the, the game mode of infection as progression. When you when you kill someone, you advance them to another team and give them a whole nother set of traits. Mm-hmm. And there's so many ways to use that. And there are so many creative ways that people have used that in the past that we've seen with, with Halo Reach and, and Halo 4 and Halo 3, like Back Kid or, or what have you, all the crazy game types out there. Okay. That's not in Halo 5 anymore. And that's part of, I think, what keeps the the game populations up is because there's you can always if you're tired of arena matchmaking you can always just go into custom games with your friends and play all these crazy game types which were pretty much endless in in halo reach well there was also the insane game mode in halo reach too yeah yeah that too that I mean, was there were a lot totally of really cool of things most... that yeah go it ahead. was one of the most just really Useful. innovative things i think yeah you could do so much with that. I mean, I remember watching Pete the Duck videos on him doing some really interesting stuff with that. I mean, somebody actually built a chess game type out of it. Oh, uh, yeah. And it worked. Yep. It's a classic one right there. It did. It did. Well, except for Checkmate. I think well, that didn't it's... really work too well. But other than that, yeah, it worked. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. And it wasn't Skee-Ball built off of the insane game type too? Yeah. It was. So many good, good stuff. There, there's a lot of things that with the direction. Yeah, and I was just gonna say there's there's a lot of stuff that we we've seen in past Halo games that were kind of like staples, and think you would think that it would be something that kind of gets included at the start of any Halo game after that. And I, there's quite a few things in Halo Five that are just missing. Yeah, and I think with the direction, if you just look at at least Forge from what we've seen from that and their their whole model of how they've gone about developing it from what we've seen which i really like and really comforts me at the end of the day is that they want to take directly take user feedback into on a, on a day-by-day basis into how they're developing and crafting the the forge system so i think if they take that same same approach to their development style and translate that into how they build custom games and and game types i think that we won't be let down and in fact i actually think that we'll like them a lot more um because if you also look at what what they've teased from from things like griff ball and stuff and and their quote-unquote new innovative ball game types that they're that they want to add there's there's apparently going to be so much more that you can do alone with just that one game type that involves a ball it's not just going to be a simple griff ball game type anymore so i think in with if they take that direction and apply it to the rest of Halo in general, maybe after Halo 5 with Halo 6, I think that we won't be let down. And I think that we'll really like the direction that they take. But that's to me, that seems like a big ask. Yeah, it does. I would hope to see that they take that initiative to do it for Halo 6. There's a lot of business behind the scenes that I'm sure is going on with Microsoft where I'm not sure if I would really trust Microsoft to make that judgment because that's more of a hey, this is a community thing. This is going to be us spending more money on dev time and not more money that we're putting in our pockets. Are you okay with this? And Microsoft might be like, eh, no, where's our money? Going to milk this cash money, cow money, as much money, as money. possible. Yeah, it's, and it's probably one of the biggest things that irritates me. I don't mind the rec pack system because it does help the game in a lot of different ways. But when it becomes the sole focus to where the... Uh, you know, their sole focus is just to create new rec to bring in new dollars. It's just irritating. You know, I want them to create the rec to improve the game and then have the side benefit of making money. But I guess that's just too much to ask anymore. Yeah, I, I, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff that's going on probably behind the scenes that we have no clue. And mm-hmm. it sucks that there's just that lack of transparency causes distrust with the community. And it, I mean, I was of the opinion that Halo five had to nail it or else it'd be kind of pretty much a strikeout for Halo. And 
like we got to maybe first or second base with Halo Five. Like they really need to come out a lot better with Halo Six too. They they need to have all those features there at day one. It can't be this piecemeal stuff because what they did with Halo Five Arena and multiplayer is what happened to Titanfall. They they had they had a a good feature set and functionality from a multiplayer perspective, but the game modes were just not there, and player retention tanked in Halo Five when it came to December. The population dropped significantly, and I just I just don't want to see that happen again to to Halo because I I really think what they did with Halo Five they really kind of roped it back into hey this the the functionality and the the core gameplay mechanics are good for the game. It's just a lot of the stuff that supports the game, like the lack of game modes and the lack of diverse maps, is is just a giant stain. A lack of things that keep your game interesting. Yeah, exactly. And unfortunately, so, I just don't feel like a, a new couple things a month is enough to be like, Yahoo! Everybody's coming back. Like, yeah, no. People are greedy. They want it, and they want it now. I mean, the, so the that, things that, that we've really... Today. The things that we've really gotten that people have been asking for was Forge, uh, big team. four new maps, big team, and the Halo 2 rocket launcher. Yeah. Or, or the, the the classic rocket launcher, the Spanker rocket launcher. Oh, I forgot That's that, it. that was a big deal. And, and look, I, I just want to kind of point out on this Infinity's Armory pack, a lot of the updates they did to the UI were fantastic. It reminds me a lot they were. of like the Halo 2 1.1 update. Or it just kind of felt, you know, they're like, you know, yeah, it was good, but they really just polished that experience. This was a good this was a good update. It just wasn't it still left our mouths dry. Like it was a good it was a good drink of water, but then you still come up and you're still dehydrated. Interesting way to put it. I don't know. I, yeah. it, it's just I'm I'm tired of the constant letdown. You know, like I've been I've been wanting to see a lot of changes in Halo Five for a long time, and especially going after this Infinity's Armory. I'm st- I'm just disgusted at this point. I mean, we've we've had this discussion last week. We we went into it pretty long time last week, but I don't know. I just I honestly feel that we need to see some drastic, not drastic, but like some changes that will start giving us an idea of this is where we're going to start going with things. Because if it's not, that it just isn't going to add up, really. You you can't you can't spoon feed me rec packs anymore and be all right with it. It's just not gonna happen. I want to see game types and I want to see better games, uh, game types getting thrown into the matchmaking. And I'm tired of playing the same game types that I've been playing since day one. The only game types that have been changed so far is the weekend ones, and I've had more fun playing those than I have playing any other ones that I've played regularly. And I'm sorry, but Warzone just isn't. F- fulfilling any of that and that's where their main focus is it's just not there no i'm kind of torn on when people say warzone is where their focus is i'm not sure i believe it because well, then where what else would you have, consider they that have then? To, well they you got a huge part of the halo community saying they're too focused on competitive esports halo and that's why it ruined halo like well right well that's I, that's different though no things. no so i'm Warzone. I'm, well right but when it comes to updates and stuff, you don't see them going towards competitive esports. You see them going towards Warzone. Like you get maybe you get one map of esports, and the rest of everything is aesthetics and stuff that's going to be obtained in Warzone and rec packs. That's it. As far as updates, yes. But as far as multiplayer focus from a public perspective, competitive Halo is ruling the airwaves with everything HCS and Halo World Championship and. It's the the other part of it. I think the other part of the competitive arena side Haas is that the social aspect and the lack of game types is an issue. Oh, absolutely. But the lack of game types is a big issue in esports too. So like, I I think a lot of people think it isn't, but it really is. Yeah. It's just lots of room to grow. I, I feel like when we see this game a year after release, we'll, It'd be kind of interesting to reflect on 
a lot of the discussions we're having now see where the community is, see where the game is, because I I feel it's going to be completely different, and it's going to be completely different as a positive, or it's going to be completely different as a negative. I hope, and my gut says positive, but there's just that little part of me that, like, I wonder. <laughs> yeah. I, anyways, that I think is going to be it for the night. There's one other thing that we haven't mentioned yet, and I don't think we covered it last time, but the breakout playlist in Arena has been replaced by the community breakout playlist, which includes some new community maps, including Simulation, which was the pit remake for Breakout, which I'm excited to play. I need to get a group on this weekend to play a little bit and finish out the other playlist that I need ranks in before the end of the season, which uh, that's another thing, too, is that the January season is going to be coming to a close here pretty soon. So we've got the seasons are monthly for the ranks and we're going to have uh, the ranks reset. Probably I'm guessing it will be the first of the month. I would assume that's when it's going to be. And um, yeah, so make sure you get in any ranks that you need for playlists. Those will be reset here pretty soon. And if you get ranked, then you will actually get a, I think it's just an, emblem right now at least that's what they've said but you get a little a little season emblem i think they're going to do that for every season so make sure you get in there and at least get i think you just have to be ranked in one playlist to get it so make sure you uh get that done and uh yeah that's gonna wrap it up for us tonight make sure you check us out on all of our social media we are on twitter facebook youtube and instagram all that fun stuff <clears throat> Make sure that um, we have your subscribe to YouTube because we have a couple of videos coming up. I think GT, you're working on uh, achieving Halo, or you did a recording of it. Uh, yeah, this past weekend, I, right? Right now, we're just working on getting the assets in there in the video in the correct order, and uh, should be up here in the next week or so. Hopefully, faster than that. Sweet. And you're doing that through some of the Spartan Company stuff too, right? So people that are in Spartan Company can come yes. help you make some of these episodes. Yes, matter of fact, uh, I've been I'm starting to try to do my recordings at five o'clock Eastern on Saturdays. So if you want to be a part of it, hit me up either on Twitter or Xbox Live. Shoot me a message through Waypoint. I do have a post on the forums as well you can respond on. But yeah, if you want to be part of it, just let me know and we'll get you in. Sweet. So that's an opportunity for you guys to get into some videos and help us out making some stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, also, there was a pretty severe tragedy in the community this week. Um, uh, one Halo community member lost his both of his daughters to a house fire. He was out and uh, on the job and his house caught fire and he lost his two daughters. So there's a, a GoFundMe and there's a charity live stream happening this weekend, which uh, might kind of get overshadowed by some of the X game stuff that's going on. But if you guys want to go uh, check that out, there's links all over social media and there is a um, Twitch channel, Halo for crazed. Um, his gamer tag is the crazed Spartan. I think he's actually sent some submissions to us before in the past. So, um, yeah, he's going through a pretty rough time right now, losing both of his daughters in his house. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't imagine having to go through something like that ever. I mean, losing a house is one thing, but losing losing your kids has to be. I I can't even Crushing. imagine. No, Crushing. I get when I heard that that was really disturbing. Really, like that really kind of hit home. Um, because I kind of had a friend that kind of was in the same situation. So I kind of, I don't know what he's going through, but I can understand the, everything he's going through as of right now, because valuables and stuff like that, you you know, things that you own can be replaced. Your kids can't, you know, it's just, it's just how it is. And, um, I really do strongly suggest everyone go try to, if you, even if it's not even donating, just give them, you know, words to help them out. In some way, yeah, just um, I mean, send them his, a kind word. Yeah, 
You know, this has been a pretty crappy month for me. <laughs> Seems like it'd be a crappy month for a lot of people, with especially a lot of the celebrity deaths. Well, I mean, even on a personal level, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm I'm really heartbroken over his loss, but I've had one uncle and a good friend pass away this month, and I'm waiting to see who the third one is. Um, it, it This has just been a bad month. There's just yeah. been a lot of death in my life. I mean, not all of it is directly related to me, but I, I'm kind of thinking about going back to being a hermit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, there's. It's just crazy the amount of stuff that's been happening this month, though. Honestly, I mean, I'm not gonna tangent off into anything, but it's this has been really kind of depressing month for a lot of different reasons. <sighs> yeah, just sad to hear a lot of the stuff that's happening. Yeah. Anyways, thoughts and prayers out to you, crazed. Um, Most definitely. We're all here. I, I, I can't say anything. anything I can't. I can't say things will get better in good conscience because I know it's gonna be a rough year or more <laughs> it's gonna hurt for a long time so if you have a chance drop by the stream it's gonna be a 24-hour stream starting saturday i believe at 8 a.m something like that so it's uh twitch.tv slash i think it's starting at a uh, at noon or something oh is it okay yeah yeah i have a i have a shift on sunday okay but yeah uh twitch.tv slash halo for craze we'll probably host it from our channel as well so Check out the stream, go support them, and yeah, just it's it sucks. <laughs> Don't know what else to say, to be perfectly honest, so I'll just leave it there. So that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. Kenny, you want to plug all your social media and all the Ultimate Halo stuff before we sign off for the night? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, my Twitter is uh, twitter.com slash the Spartacat. Changed my Twitter handle like three times in the last two months. Yeah, um, Kenny Winnipeg. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, she, the, you tried. Um, and then uh, Ultimate Halo is a thing as well um, on the YouTubes that you might have heard of. Um, and yeah, I think that's basically it. I guess my gamer tag is uh, iSpartacat. If you want to add me as well, we can we can play the Halos. To Halos. We can play all the Halos, all all to Halos. Yay! All to Halos. All the Halos, all the time. <laughs> exactly. You guys got it right. Also, make sure you check out our podcast network. We're part of a conglomerate of gaming specific shows. So we are part of a network that includes Critscast, which is a TF2 podcast, Guardian Radio, which is a Destiny podcast, and The Learning Cliff, which is an EVE Online podcast, along with a couple other ones. You can check them out over at podk8.st. Let them know that we sent you. If you're looking for some podcasts just to kind of fill your time, or if you are interested in those games, then there are some good quality podcasts to check out and listen to. Definitely recommend going and checking them all out. We will see you guys next week. We'll cover another campaign mission. We'll do another multiplayer topic and cover some other stuff. And until then, uh, hopefully we'll see you guys either Friday for Frag and Fridays or our company events for Tuesday and Wednesday. And back next week on Thursday for the podcast. Thank you again, Kenny, for coming on out and giving us a little Ultimate Halo love. And for everyone listening at home. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. I uh, hope to have you back on again. It'd be pretty cool. Uh, for everyone else at home, thank you for listening. We will see you guys next time. Keep on fragging the last slice.